It's an American Thanksgiving edition of Ingoal Radio, the podcast. And the turkey on this program is Kevin Woodley because he is off. He is in parts that we know, in fact, at Source for Sports Langley, the hockey shop, thehockeyshop.com. The brand new store is open and uh, Woody's over there getting a grand tour. And he was supposed to be back, except he's decided to do uh, all the gloves and everything else. And he just phoned us and said, uh, I'm, I'm not going to make it. Uh, does that surprise you at all, David Hutchison? It doesn't surprise me at all, Darren, but I'm a little concerned. I mean, will we have a sponsor for the show next week? They've just opened a new store and Kevin goes in there and rips everything off the shelf. And they basically have to rebuild the goalie section because he got so excited, I would think. I'm just envisioning what this tour must have been like. No, they've been... They've been awesome sponsors of this show for so long, and, and we're thankful and excited for them to have this new location opening up in Langley. Uh, bigger store, more facilities for everybody, great parking, great neighborhood right down the street from the Vancouver Giants junior team, uh, all sorts of great things. And I can't wait to see what Cam has in his new upgraded goalie section, because look, they're already the place to go if you need goalie gear. They're the place to go. If you want to shop online for your gear, because they ship everywhere and they've got an incredible selection. And if you want to just pick up the phone and call Cam or call some of the other great experts in the goalie section there, uh, you can get some super advice and dial in the gear that you want. So opening up this new location in Langley only means things are going to get bigger and better for the hockey shop. And we're really excited and want to congratulate them on their new move. With the modern technology, we have the tour uh, that has been sent over between Cam uh, guiding Woody around. But we'll also have some news and some Black Friday uh, deals from the hockey shop, uh, thehockeyshop.com and Source for Sports Langley. We'll get into that in just a little bit, uh, as well as our Sensorina, Sensorina VR feature interview is uh, coming to us from North America via Finland with Juha Latola. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And it it really does go back to relationships. When I meet somebody today, it might become advantageous to me in two months or five years. You don't know. Uh, And it all does come down to people that you cross paths with. And you better make sure that you treat everybody respectfully. 100%. You can never. I, I love unraveling the threads of your life to see all the small little coincidences they got you to where you are. I won't bore everybody with the story, but I would not have my kids and I wouldn't be married if a friend of mine hadn't started volunteering taping ankles for a university basketball team. Mm-hmm. Little tiny thing like that changes your life. And so, yeah, relationships are everything. Uh, and, and I just love this interview as a coach, as a person, to listen to the path uh, that Yuha took to become a professional goaltending coach. American League right now, I'm sure there's a future for him in the National Hockey League. And the steps that he took along the way on that journey, in terms of education, in terms of getting a work placement and volunteering over uh, in Canada and the Ontario Hockey League, the people that he met there and how that's opened doors. Uh, put your nose to the grindstone, work hard, and doors open up for you, don't they? Hey, did you see the rule change that the National Hockey League is adopting. They're grandfathering in helmets in warm-up. They are. Just not on the bench. guys, right. So this is interesting, but goalies, this is how it may affect you. In college, in minor hockey, in a lot of junior leagues, uh, you have to wear your mask, your helmet on the bench during, uh, during the course of action. You don't in the National Hockey League. But after what happened this past week to Jack Campbell, do you think we get close to that? Or will goalies all stand up and say, I need that ball cap? Oh, it's pretty hard to lose the swag of the ball cap and maybe even that right. the in-goal backup towel. I've seen some backup towels around the league again recently. Uh, I think it would be a long time before they they make that move. Um, it's, it's interesting, Darren. Um, in, in minor hockey, although the goaltenders have to wear their mask on the bench, it's actually just a warning from the referee. It's not a penalty right away. So you can actually get away. Nope. You, yeah, you can actually get away with it for a little while until the referee decides to come along and warn you. Um, bit strange that they would do it that way. Uh, a shout out to Jack Campbell. I mean, we know the goaltenders are the toughest people on the team. Everybody sort of poo-poos the fact that we don't lose chiclets in a game and go get dental work and come right back in. 
but there he was backing up the other night. Uh, Dougie Hamilton deflected a, an Oilers dump in and accidentally up into Jack Campbell's face, uh, breaking his nose, had to leave the game. We had an emergency backup appearance, but there he is next game back in starting uh, faced the Islanders last night and Campbell with a broken nose um, stopped 28 to 31. Unfortunately for the Oilers, uh, Ilya Sorokin came in there and pitched a 49 save shutout. What an incredible performance for him. But I uh, just love that Campbell showing us how tough goaltenders can be even when we are all you goalie parents out there. I like to think we're the safest position on the ice, but uh, sometimes we got to be a little bit careful when you're sitting on the bench and pay attention. Do you know, I actually had, a, I actually had a backup goalie save me twice in one game. I was on the I'm bench. Yeah, I was on the bench uh, coaching. Uh, for a bantam game and two different dump ins. It was a weird rink where, you know, one of those rinks where the bench actually extends into the defensive zone. And, oh, yeah, yeah. and so a couple of times a player tried to clear it from our team and uh, I wasn't paying attention well enough. And this uh, backup goaltender snagged the puck right out of the air and saved me. Backup goalies feel great when they do that. Not not saving the coach necessarily. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they'd rather leave the puck uh, and let it hit the coach. I'm not saying you uh, particularly there, Hutch, but uh, go backup goalies love making that save on, on the bench. It's cool. Now, have you ever had a broken nose? I, 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 and I ask you, the listener as well, have you ever had a broken nose? Answer me right now, everybody. No. Okay. I haven't either. I've had bangs where there's slight black eyes, mm -hmm. but I've never had a true broken nose. I'm asking this purely from 10,000 feet, not as a goaltender, not as a forward, but I'm interested should jack campbell have played right after suffering a broken nose when so much depends on the vision and being uh, whether it's uh peripheral or straight out or working your way around and the the mask jogging around your, your head i wonder how comfortable that was and whether or not he should have played well, that's a good question that's a real tough one we might need uh woody to come in and answer that one because no See, woody him. will say for sure yes he's he, he like, he can't be unbiased in this. No, but if he broke his nose, you know that he wouldn't be on the show for six weeks and he wouldn't be able mm -hmm. out there with his beer league team because of how traumatic it was. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Those are really tough calls. You got to know that he's a pro and you have to know that the medical staff, there are pros. So nobody's pushing him out into something that's dangerous. No. Uh, did he, you know, did he get a little bit of credit? But are you, are you, are you allowed to be at your best if you've got black eyes and stuff going uh, on around your, I don't know. your so, face right in front of you. Sometimes when things get the toughest, that's when we dial in and we're focused even a little bit more. So who knows? True. Who knows? And maybe he gained a little credibility with his teammates because he was Probably. out there when things weren't great. And does that help help him in the long run? So if asking this question upset you and you're listening right now, forward all mail to David Hutchison. To Kevin Woodley at ingolmag.com. <laughs> No, no. Listen, if you ever want to talk to us, head over to the Ingle website. There's a contact play, uh, link on there and uh, we will all see it. So we would love you to send us uh, send us your mail. Tell Darren if you've ever played with a broken nose. Tell him what what that experience yeah, was like. And because uh, he and I are both softies and have never done it before. Hey, I got uh, uh, some email from you guys this week. Some mail coming out into my inbox. Really? And uh, asking me to fill out a survey. Oh. Oh, sorry. So, so often I send on comments from readers and things and, yeah, and no, I know no, I've no. done this one is, of those too. This is too, me so as an in yeah, subscriber. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, thanks to everybody who's uh, part of our email list. Usually all we do is send out that weekly note with all the updates on the site and what's, uh, what's changed just so you can get a quick link and look at all the stories. But uh, last week, about a week ago, we sent out a survey on behalf of a marketing company. I know you probably don't like us nagging you too much, but but, but, but somebody from that who completed that survey is going to win a full set of pads and gloves custom from one of the major manufacturers. Can't say which because we try not to bias the survey uh, that was done, but you will get one person lucky enough to complete the survey will get a full custom set of gear. And what's great is that we're doing it again this week. It's a slightly different survey that's going to be going out. Not quite sure. I'm guessing beginning of next week. Uh, we are recording this on Thursday, November 24th. There'll be a short window for you to complete that survey and entered again into a new draw for a second custom set of gear. So if you're not on the InGoal email list, if you're not getting regular updates from us via email, head over to InGoalMag.com 
and uh, scroll down a little bit and you will find a box where you can enter your email address and get on our list and then you will get sent that survey. Please, please, if you decide to do this two, three weeks from now after you've uh, listened to the podcast, don't right. send me a note saying, hey, can I get the survey? No, like it's either going to come to you because you're on quick enough or, or it won't. I'm sorry. There's a there's a tight window when these companies need these things completed, but just our way of giving a little bit of feedback to um, one of the companies as to the gear preferences you have, why you choose what you choose, what level you play at, things you'll be looking for next time you go out and buy something, just so that they've got a better understanding of uh, how to build the product for you, how to present the product to you, and so on. And we're, we're just happy to help them out because we know we're getting somebody in the end goal audience a chance to win something big. Yeah, you know you've already got those opinions. Fill it out, and you might be walking away with a new custom set. Yeah, why not? So Gloves, yeah. Absolutely. So hop over to ingolmag.com and get on the list. Trying to figure out a way that I can enter this and do the survey like 35 times. <laughs> doesn't, I have, I've not uh, solved it. doesn't that. work that because you get a custom link sent to you that's your link only. And uh, the nice thing is if you, if you don't want to complete it all in one sitting, you can come back, click the link again, and your answers will still be there. Yeah, sorry, Darren, you can't do it. 35 times. If you're wondering where Woody is, uh, I've heard that uh, he's uh, changed departments. He's now into the pants section uh, over at the hockey shop, Source for Sports Langley, thehockeyshop.com. He's, he's, make, he's already done the full tour, but now he's like stopping by and spending significant time in each department. Uh, so he's looking at the, uh, the goalie pants right now. But uh, lucky enough, he was able to forward the gear segment with Cam uh, from the hockey shop and thehockeyshop.com. To give us an idea, I, this is a fantastic, fantastic setup. And you mentioned parking. That makes a difference. Like right on through, it's it's more comfortable to visit the hockey shop. I can't wait to do it. I'm really jealous that we're going we're gonna to be listening to this for the first time together uh, to find out what the new shop is like, because neither one of us have had a chance to go in there yet. And, uh, and I, I can remember, I took a break from playing hockey, Darren, way back when for, for a while, and I remember walking in to this goalie store in Toronto that was just, it was like a, the size of a grocery store, it felt like to me. Pa walls of pads, walls of, of chest protectors and pants, exactly the kind of thing that Cam has over at the hockey shop. But obviously Cam's is so much bigger and better now. And I just remember the excitement, my heart racing and wanting to grab everything and wanting to get back out there on the ice and seeing a place like that just built my love for the game even more. So I can only imagine how we're going to feel when we get to walk into uh, the hockey shop Sorcerer Sports Langley to see what they've got now. And I can't wait to hear from Kevin. Tell us about it. I know that same place. You know, the one issue it was parking. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's, it's, it's all solved here yeah, yeah. Uh, at Sorcerer Sports Langley, the hockey shop, the hockey shop .com. Woody celebrating with some Black Friday deals after the tour with Cam. Guys? Welcome back to the Hockey Shop Source for Sports, but we're not in the basement. We're not in Goalie Utopia. We're in the new Hockey Shop Source for Sports, Langley, recording a segment of audio specifically for the podcast. Make sure you go check out the YouTube, Instagram for our video, which will walk you through the store, but a little hard to do a walkthrough in an audio space. So we're just going to have Cam walk us through the highlights for those of you that can't obviously see the video right now but go check it out later this place is huge dude Thirty-four thousand square feet of awesome of awesome of okay. hockey awesome so we don't have our own floor anymore for the goalies but we got our own little corner yes. huge pad little corner massive corner that's bad. huge pad wall three stick racks little separation between brands for you on the stick racks walk me through some of the other highlights of this new setup uh, i love the skate fitting area um, new benches, some features that aren't in yet that are coming. Tell me about the mirror and the ability to take a photo of yourself in your. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's let's walk before we run here a little bit. Yes, there's still some features that haven't shown up yet. Don't want to overpromise by anything yet. That said, uh, we have our, we're going to be setting up our own crease zone, so you are able to take your own pictures, see yourself inside the net, see how the gear is looking on you. See your size profile, things like that. We've got four basically stories. I'm not a story, but four four blocks, levels. Levels. 
you are leveling pads. up. Leveling up by checking out all of these pads. Uh, I've got a massive mask wall at the moment, but that is going to change actually very quickly. And I'm going to get a nice independent stand for that. Again, more to come. It's very much an active, uh, evolving area so far. We're not 100% yeah, there's yet. There's people around here still with power tools. Do they trust you at the power tools camp? Uh, no, actually. So I much was, like my family doesn't allow me to use power. I was uncertified with the hammer. Yeah, didn't didn't make it on this one. Safety first, camp safety first. Well, that's okay. So I get huge, huge team sales section now. So we're really driving home the fact that we can make sure your team gets fitted up and whatnot. Our skate sharpening department's got a massive upgrade. Lots of abilities to profile, easy drop off. Continuing on, we have one of the biggest glove walls, like player glove walls. I hate to glove about something that's player, but it's massive. Definitely worth checking out. It's all new. It's massive. Like you said, 34,000 square feet. Lots of parking too. I know that was a bit of an issue at the other place. Yes, tons of parking. Tons of parking. Yep, you're not going to get carjacked either. That's a benefit of moving <laughs> out to Langley from the old store. Um, so lots of positives here That's... at the new hockey shop source for sports. Uh, very much but so. the same service, the same people to walk you through all the items and everything still online at thehockeyshop.com. Before we let you go, uh, walk us through some of the highlights. It's Black Friday. Walk us through some of the highlights of the Black Friday sale. Of course, everyone can check out everything in full at thehockeyshop.com, but just give me a couple items. Yeah, I mean, we definitely take a look at uh, the Axis A 1.9 pads. We've got quite a few of those guys, especially in the senior sizes on sale. Definitely check those out. Um, if you're looking for an intermediate chest, the Warrior G5. I think we've got lots of the medium large size. Uh, uh, pricing off the top of my head, probably going to be around 245 so good deal there. Those are marked down pretty heavily. Um, Warrior Senior to G5 chest, there's a few in the bigger sizes, so it all depends on, again, exactly what size you're looking for. We also got some Warrior GT2 pads in the senior sizes left over. I think those are marked down to $699 uh, off the top of my head. Um, so again, there's a few things to check out. There's definitely going to be more if you go on the website, check us out. Once again, www.thehockeyshop.com. We should have our own Black Friday section that you're able to click on and check out. 34,000 square feet of awesome, massive goalie section, like up to the rafters, pad, wall, tons of great stuff. Also, folks, as Cam mentioned, you got the sharpening facility. Cecil's still over there. Two shooting lanes now to check out. Two shooting lanes and a massive area for NHL licensed merchandise yes. and apparel. So don't forget all it's your not, Christmas it's shopping not, needs. Not just goalie. You can get all your Christmas shopping needs taken care of and a lot of it on sale during Black Friday. Make sure you check them out. If you can in person, it was lined up out the door for the opening day. Still a lot of people in the store checking out the new facilities here out in Langley, the hockey shop source to sports Langley. And of course, if you're not from the area, you can't come drop by and see Cam in person. Make sure you check them out at thehockeyshop.com. Or give us a call 604-589-8299 or 1-800-567-7790. Now we just got to come up with a name for this place. Is it still Goalie Utopia? <sighs> it's not the Goalie Vault anymore. Can it be Goalie Utopia? Yeah, I think Pretty so. You. but. Looks like utopia to me. Well, that's folks. If you got suggestions after you see the video, check it out. IGTV, Facebook video, YouTube. Check out the video of the new store and let us know what you think the new goalie area should be called. Thanks, Kevin. Official protest. I like to think that we, and thank you, Woody. Uh, that was awesome. But seriously. We should spread the wealth around. Like he got to do something really cool there. That means you're next. You think so? Yeah. So uh, why don't you come down to Vegas and hang out? Oh. And we'll make him as jealous as we are right now. All right. All right. Here we go. I'm just going to see if I can look up. Travel tickets. Velocity, figure yeah. it out. Let's go. Okay. I, I wouldn't come down here right now because travel is a little expensive during thanksgiving weekend right, down here right but uh well but, you're probably but, busy but anyway yeah we got three games and four nights uh in in vegas this year, which is so cool for me because they're in my backyard uh but uh but come down first week second week of december uh prices start to drop with travel nobody's traveling right around the those couple of weeks everybody's saving it up you get down here and you and i will have a blast and we'll make that sound of a gun wishing he was here more than anything I think it's a date. Let's do it. All right. No, it's not uh, a date. Let's, but let's it's make it a... happen. Uh, we'll go over. We'll hang out with uh, with Sean Burke or Freddie Brathwaite uh, with the Silver Knights, uh, the Golden Knights, uh, lots of stuff. 
happening. Uh, Darren Elliott, uh, goalie uh, that I work with on the BGK broadcast. Lots of goalies to hang That's out with. That's awesome. Bags, we buddy. could, uh, and then we could FaceTime Woody and Cam. Yeah. Well, we, we, you know what? We'll pretend we can't hear them though. We'll say sorry. Uh, it's it's just too jammed Music up. Music around the pool is still loud. It's affecting the yeah, yeah. the Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, pool party. Pool's uh, just about to shut down, so we got to get that in uh, right away. We got Yuha Latola coming up on the Sensorina Sensorina VR feature interview. He's a fantastic story because he's he's just sunk his life into being a goalie coach, and he's really just worked his way up every level by dedicating himself to this craft. It's not a get rich. It's not a become famous. It's not a uh, capitalize and have this great opportunity. It's just love of the sport. And he has uh, done it all for the right reasons. And it's brought to you by Sensorina, Sensorina VR. It sure is. And now is an incredible time. If you would like to try Sensorina, now's one of the best times to do it. Head over to Sensorina.com and check out the Black Friday special they have going right now. You get a free Quest headset. We're all used to them being called the Oculus Quest. I don't know if you know, Darren, Facebook renamed it. It's the Meta Quest. Threw me yep. off the first time I saw it. But it's the virtual reality, the latest headset from Quest. Uh, you get the headset for free. You also get a discount on your annual membership to Sensorina. You also get four, count them, four licenses so that if you have brothers, sisters, mom and dad or hockey players, they can all get their own account. Whether you're a player or a goaltender, because don't forget there's a Sense Arena player's account now or player's version, so you can work on your skills. Uh, you get the controller, sorry, the, the sleeves for your gloves, or you can get one for your stick as a player uh, as part of this package as well. And it all works out to, I think it's about a 35% discount. I won't quote the prices because it depends on your country. Um, and just go over, check it out, everybody. But, yep. but when you check out, there's a little coupon thing and you can put in the code IGM50 and you save even more. And so just the best time. Sense Arena, we've heard it from so many people on the In Goal Radio podcast, really is the best way to train away from the rink and work on your game as a goaltender. It's a huge advantage whether you are a minor hockey goaltender, a professional goaltender, and yes, even Kevin Woodley playing beer league. Sense Arena is the tool for everybody. So go check it out now. No better time. Hey, when you get the headset too, you're not just playing Sense Arena. You get access to all those awesome virtual reality titles out there. And I know Darren, you and the girls have been trying some of them too, right? So what, what oh, are yeah. some of your favorites? Uh, we, we like that one where, you, where you're punching boxes and it gets, starts going faster and faster. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but I actually go on and I screen, is it casting? Yeah, uh, yeah, that you do. Yeah. And I and I watch my daughter do it and, and we compare and, and I try and throw her off and she we like we hang out together and it's a it's a fun game. And then we we can't get we can't get away from fishing and the new one is football. Oh uh playing quarterback. I haven't seen yeah. I haven't seen yeah, the football really, one. Oh really what's really really cool. So uh that, that's a new one. And and I still get back to my my goal. You know, one area about it that uh, that we you guys have brought up the last couple of weeks is doing the sense arena as a goaltender, mm -hmm. but not trying to stop mm -hmm, the puck. Mm -hmm. I know it's, uh, it doesn't really compute, but you're just tracking the puck. Yeah. And it's, I tried that because I didn't really get what you were talking about, but it, it works. It makes sense. Yeah, it sure does. And I think it really actually speaks to this week's feature interview, because one of the things that Yuha and Woody talk about is teaching patience. And so you can really have that patience on sense arena. If you're not worried about making the save, you're not worried about who's watching you as you make a save or don't make a save. There's no rush because you have to stop a shot in practice. You get to just watch that puck and have all the patience in the world as you track it in. And uh, so I think it's an awesome tool and, and a great way to, uh, to work on that. If you can do it in practice, then that's great too. Two weeks ago, I think it was, I was working with a couple of junior goaltenders and we were working on patience using the iPad on the ice again, as they talk about in the feature interview today and just reviewing when was it you started going to the ice as we see that puck tracking in uh something you can do on the ice and make a big difference in somebody's game but something you can do on your own at home with sense arena well just imagine you, you got a forward out there and you say okay shoot but i'm not gonna move 
but when you shoot, don't hit me because yeah. I'm not going to move. Yeah. <laughs> I get there's for one, the forward's going to be bored. He or she's going to be like, what am I doing here doing this? And you're going to be scared because eventually they're going to cut it too close and they're going to drill you and you're not ready to move. So this is the best of all situations. It's great. To, there great situation. Yeah. No, no, easy on the body. Don't have to go rent the ice. You can get out there and practice all you want. Uh, it's a no brainer to me. Well, I know it's an investment, but it's an investment that's worth it to bring your game to the next level. Add it to the list of uh, things that we didn't see being advantageous with censoring a censoring of VR, but it helps you with your goaltending. And uh, now let's get into our feature interview. Yuha Latola is Finnish. He's over and he's in the professional ranks of North American hockey, which is so different. He's breaking new ground there. Not the first time he's been in North America and Woody covers it all with Yuha on the feature interview brought to you by Sensorina Sensorina VR. Really excited. Welcome to the Ingle Radio Podcast for the first time. Uh, now working with the Hershey Bears, but from Finland, Yuha Letola. Hopefully I got that right. Um, excited to have you on the on the podcast. Uh, I want to like there's so many different ways I can take this. I want to get into your roots, how you got started, goalie coaching in Finland over here. But let's start with the adjustment. Not your first year in North America coaching, because I know you spent some time with Sudbury a decade ago, but first time on, on the pro side in the American Hockey League with Hershey. How's the adjustment? What's been the biggest adjustment for you coming over after all those years coaching uh, in, in the top league in Finland? Maybe at the ring. Nothing has really changed or is not that different. Although like material, like uh, extra stuff that you can use to help you on the ice, doing drills and stuff like screening tripods and GoPros and, and, um, whatever else. So, uh, that's probably the biggest change. Like, um, uh, teams in Finland are not really keen to, uh, like allow goal coaches to to buy stuff and to help them and you kind of basically build your own but everything's available here uh but other than that it's 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 just goalie coaching it's not not much different well that's what i was gonna ask because i mean i i've sort of been banging this drum for quite a few years here uh it, it always amazed me because you know finland was so ahead of the curve in terms of goalie coaching programs, goalie coaching teaching, building goalie coaches, the regional system, the national program. You know, it seemed like it took forever or too long, in my opinion, to, to, to bring goalie coaches over, not just from Finland, but from other parts of Europe as well. Um, and so like you get here and you tell me it's just the same, it's just goalie coaching. Why do you think it took so long? No, no, it's uh, the approach here. I think it's, it's, it's a lot about what's been done before and it's also, I think it's a bright side too, that, that, uh, guys think that everything is covered. We know how to do it and then not exploring enough. And then obviously I wouldn't be here if I didn't know Scott Murray, uh, to be honest. So it's tough to get, get into the league, tough to get into the AHL as a European coach. I would say maybe a little bit easier as a goalie coach than uh, than head coach, but uh, you need the connection to get over. But uh, uh, but the question it's it's tough to say. It's I think it's you got to explore. You gotta learn new things. You gotta give it a shot. And and uh, I think that's what the capitalist organization is doing here. Somebody's got to go first, right? Like sometimes it, it all it takes is for one person uh, to get that first opportunity and show the rest of the league that it's possible. Obviously, UC Parkilla is a guy that sort of was the first one to get that opportunity. I know you'd, you'd actually been close to getting a job in Hershey, you know, five years ago. You know, when you look at it, like, do you think that's all it took? Like, how much do you look at what UC was able to do as in terms of being that first guy at the National Hockey League level? Did like, did other people, other goalie coaches in Finland look at that as, um, you know, as a, as a flag in the ground, so to speak? Like, hey, you know, the, the, these opportunities can be there for us and we can show that, you know, we can do this gig. 100%. It's huge what Yossi has done for Finnish goalie coaching and, and how much he helps Finnish goalie coaching overall, the, the, the association and everything. Like uh, the the meetings that we have 
with the national team goalie coaches or had he was involved he would he would do studies for us and and still help us and obviously it and i don't know if we, if it helped that he won the cup to to uh to kind of prove it that that european coaches can can do well here and and uh but yeah it's 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 huge and obviously i don't know i cannot speak to others but for me i don't i don't, I don't know if i ever thought that it's going to be possible like thinking of do i be- really believe in how good i am and uh and i think others have ho- others have proved that i i know my stuff and and uh but like yeah like i said just just part of this is is huge and then it gives confidence for organizations to do that go for it it never hurts when the cup's on the resume, does it? Whether it makes a difference or not. I know, like I said, there are circumstances where, where you were in line for a gig before. I know, you know, with Marco Terenius also this summer, getting a job here in Vancouver yes. uh, with the Canucks. You know, the timing may be coincidence, but it never hurts to have one guy break through to lead the way. Well, it didn't hurt us that, that there's no positions in KHL right now for, for Europeans and for Finns. And I think there are a couple more that, would be even interested in doing it right now because of that. So it's a time and place and who you know. Yeah, no, definitely a big part of it. Um, what about the adjustment? You said it's, it's still just goalie coaching, uh, but the style of game, you know, in terms of the way teams attack, the tactics. Um, I know in Finland, it's not necessarily the big ice in the pro league there. So maybe that's less of an adjustment. Has there been anything you've had to look at a little differently? Um, you know, with your goaltenders here than you might have back in Finland, maybe even not so much technically, but tactically, um, just because of the nature of the game and the direct nature, maybe a little less east-west and a little more everything funnels to the net over here. Has that changed at all for you? First thing that hit my ideology was when I, I went to Canada for the World Juniors three years ago, two and a half years ago, how small it actually is, because in Finland, basically, it, it can be short, but it's wide. The ice surface is wide. So once I got there and then thinking of like playing the puck and how 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 much teams are rimming the puck and uh, how involved you need to get with your stick, it's probably double compared to Finland. Uh, and then just talking to goalies that I had, for me, it's a lot about depth. And getting back into the post, you don't really, you don't really challenge sharp angle situations. It's just either your toes are on top of the crease or you're on the post. That's the biggest thing that I kind of, well, the ide- ideology. I, I've I've been trying to think what the difference is. Difference is whether it's a, a puck might come to the net faster from the from the corner because it's closer to you, but I don't still want to be in the reverse. I want to stay on my feet so that I can move anywhere. Uh, so I, that was something that I thought would be different, but I don't. I don't think so. Only basically the biggest thing is that either you're you're challenging on top of the pace or you're on the post. That's the biggest thing for me. Is that that just the style of like you said the smaller rank? Is it more direct? Is there more traffic? Is there a little? It's it's funny because we've talked about the NHL over the last five years increasingly becoming an East-West league. And, you know, I remember talking to, you know, goalies coming over from Europe uh, that were still playing or goalies that went over there during lockouts, Pecorine, um, guys that had gone over there in the East-West, especially in the KHL, like the patience of East-West and East-West again and dust it off and pass one more time. Like the yeah. patience required and the style was so different. And yet I would think the way the NHL is going back and forth so much in terms of lateral plays and passes that, that some of that might translate even like it lo- might look even more familiar now than it would have five years ago. Oh yeah. Obviously players are more knowledgeable of how to score goals. And that's, that's one job that I do do here also is try to, uh, try to bring the, bring the knowledge to players of how scores are or goals are scored in hockey anyways. And, uh, obviously in broken plays and, and how the puck moves, and how it's been shot to the net quickly off the boards, and it's closer, a puck's closer to you because it's more narrow than in, in European ice surfaces. So, so you need to be ready. And that's 
like I like I said, I I like to talk a lot about goalies playing on the post. That's something that you need to be able to find all the time. The puck will come back so fast that if you're not ready for that, if you're outside all the time, you you're gonna you're gonna eventually play yourself out from the game or the situation. And and uh, but yeah, east to west and patience and it's like probably I would say Finnish goalies that go to KHL that would be the first step for them probably if you don't make it here it's huge there like those guys are so skilled and so patient that that if you're impatient you're not you're not going to be play in that league and i think same thing here now especially when teams and team scout goalies team scout scoring goals how how goals are scored if you're not patient you're not you're not surviving on the flip side of that, now as a goalie coach, knowing that, this is a question that we ask a lot of goalies um, and the answers are sometimes fascinating. As a teacher, how do you teach patience? How do you, how do you, how do you get these guys more comfortable holding their edges? I, I think it's something, I think especially if Finnish goalies you know, are sort of renowned for, that, that footwork and the patience on their edges, the movement on their edges and the ability to hold edges a little longer. Is that something that uh, do you, do you, is that right? And how do you how do you go about teaching it? How do you go about helping goalies get more patient? It's it's a it's a tough question, but it's a big one. It's it, it is huge. And actually, obviously, I got to spend a lot of time with Scott Murray in uh, the Washington Capitals main camp, and we were talking about it and how much we demand goalies stay narrow from their feet, have their feet underneath their. Uh, underneath their body and and to be able to track well and uh and move well and it's funny how how like you want to get wide when the shots come in you it's just natural instinct i think for goalies and then for me what i actually started thinking is what if we reverse the order of, of teaching like what we usually do is we teach movement and then we teach making the save after the movement you want to you want to have sharp edges you want to stop you want to set your feet make a save but it's tough it's tough in a game game environment to stay narrow enough and have the confidence of staying narrow if the shot's coming so what if we reverse the order and we teach the goalie stay narrow and they still have time to drop drive their knees down and make a save and then we can teach Teach them move when they're narrow and teach them move when they're wide and a little bit lower and have the confidence of doing doing saves from different stance, like width. But I think like just, just by demanding you gotta stay narrow and you're gonna stay patient, it doesn't help at all. You gotta make them feel confident being narrow and still be ma- still being able to make the save. So I think that's that's something that um I've already implemented a little bit, and that's something that I want to do in the future too. That ability, what do you th- is the biggest challenge for guys to be able to be comfortable and get comfortable making saves out of a narrow stance? Because you're right, the tendency is to want to widen out and sometimes stiffen up, right? Like we sort of, goalies sometimes feel like they need to be spring-loaded, and so they widen out, they dig those edges in, and sometimes they get tense in the upper body. I would think and being able to execute out of a narrow stance might allow you to stay a little more relaxed, and yet that natural tendency is the opposite. Um, do you think some goalies just need to realize they can they can execute butterfly saves and saves out of a narrow stance and just break that sort of mechanism for them? Is it is it something you've seen or had success with elsewhere? Well, I'm obviously videoing, making them realize that you have time, you can. You can drop down, slow down the video, start from further out, stay narrow, you have time, make sure you track it well, bring your head down the shots, and then you start bringing pucks closer, 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 and but you don't want them to go wider, wider, wider until it's really close to you. And one, like, obviously once they start getting rep, that, hey, I can do it, I have time if I do well with my head, I want to do well with my eyes. I want to involve my hands. I want to control the game with my hands. I want to control the game with my stick. I don't want to give rebounds off my pads. Then, basically, it comes down to 
you cannot decide if that guy is taking a shot or not. So how would you, how would you play this situation? Where, what kind of a stance would you like to be in order to do whatever happens? Like you cannot decide for him that he's shooting. He might pass it or he might fake it. Um, but if you commit too much and go too wide to a play that you think that might happen or is happening, you're going to be late. So it's basically because you cannot buy time. Right. How do you beat time? There's no, there's no one has really done it yet. So did you uh, just out of curiosity, like and not knowing the background when you, you know, the last, you know, decade in Finland, um, you know, working at the highest level with HPK, um, did you work down at youth levels as well? Like, was there a trickle down where you were working with the other coaches? I know in the club system, it's a little different. Um, sometimes you're not necessarily just working with the pros. You can like, cause I, when you talk about that, it feels like it would be something that would be probably easier if you could start kids like that rather than try and untrain habits at the pro level. And I'm just wondering if you had a chance to experiment with that at, at, at other levels where maybe some of that natural tendency to widen out and dig in hasn't been so ingrained. Obviously it's, it would be beneficial when it, like the sooner you started, the better, right? So giving the confidence yeah. for them that I can. I can be successful being narrower. Uh, it's tough for guys that are already wide. It's it's a lot harder to make guys go more narrow. It, it's easier to to make them go more wide. Uh, but um, I was heavily involved with with the U twenty team in where in uh, in Finland the team that I I worked for uh, and their goalie coach was on the ice every morning with me with the like extra like academy skate that we had one goalie or then he brought one goalie from the juniors to practice with one of our goalies and we were on the same page pretty well on on what we believed in and uh and obviously he 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 was there to learn also and and obviously it worked out well because he's now he took my spot as in the men's team so but like i like you said it's it obviously the sooner you started but then it's really interesting because I might, might, I might be totally wrong. It's just like, this is how human body works. Like you, athletic stance, you can move better, but is that the only way to be successful? Cause you can see guys that are really wide and be really successful. So, but, but, uh, I, I believe in, I, I believe in that. Because the game is not slowing down. So I think in the long run, if you cannot adjust speed wise, if you're too wide, it, you're not gonna you're not gonna do well. All right. That, I mean that makes total sense. But you're right. I, I think that's why we love the position so much, at least oh here on the in goal side, you It's the uh it's the fact that the, you know, I love discussions like this, but at the end of the day, like you said. There's no one absolute right way or wrong way to to do this yeah. position. Yeah, I like. I do, I do uh, pre scouts on 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 goalies, and what I realized, like, there's so many. Like, I don't think there are bad any bad goalies in AHL. So how do we beat those guys that are so good, like in all aspects? But then you start seeing like tendencies on on different goalies. Okay, he's really wide. He comes really far out. How can we beat him? And then we play against them and they they are really successful in what they're doing. They have a plan for that. I would like, obviously if, if players would just follow the, the instructions that we go through before the game, then obviously there would be a better chance, but there's so many moving things inside the game. Like there's five guys defending it and, and they might have a structure of how to defend because they know that that goal is their goalie is coming far out and he's taking a shot. So we're taking the passes away and, and it's, it, it's tough, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's fun. It's also fun to kind of study what others do. And I think that's, you got to do that. If you want to be good at this, you got to learn from others too. Like I said, the, um, there's so many different ways to play goalie and different ways to have success. I'm curious how you would define the prototypical and, and how maybe this has changed over the years. When I say, you know, he's a Finnish style goaltender, what, what does that mean to you? What would you see are some of the traits that have become 
common with the success we see of of Finnish goaltenders. Recognize it. And well, I'll let you answer that one. And then I got a part B, as I tend to do. I apologize. No problem. Uh, no, I was thinking of that before, and and when I got involved to involved in talking about tracking and head trajectory, without knowing much about it, I thought it's just something that us goalies were taught in Finland from when we were seven years old. How do you rotate your upper body? How do you turn your head? How do you give space to your weak? Like, like far side foot to get that played on the ice how do you recover up how do you start your slide I think it must like m- most of that was done without us even knowing it, coaches not even knowing why they're doing stuff it's just the way that the whole system was planned when they started doing that in Finland uh, but then obviously when once I got to know more about the subject it's there's you can do it, but you can you can do it really well if you know more about it. But I think it's just overall like just how to get behind, how to be athletic, how to be mobile, how to uh, obviously bring uh, guys like Finnish baseball. We play that in school, in elementary school. There's a lot of a lot of sports that kind of support that position that would be uh, had success in Finland. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff done ten twenty years ago in Finland that we're still doing now. The one that I always used to remember is, I mean, hands. I, like like, I, and it's almost stereotypical. I mean, you look at the movement of a guy like UC and how well he skates, um, and that's obviously part of that. But just the hands and the and the active hands and and. and Maybe every goalie has to have that now, but I think there was an era there where the re- I would say the rest of the world, but there were parts of the world where hands were getting sort of you know locked into the body, and and Finnish goalies always kept them active. Is that something that you still see sort of emphasized and stressed, um, probably throughout? I'm guessing back home. Um, I think so. I am taught to do that when I was younger. When I played the position, uh, I still believe in it. Uh, but I also believe in staying big and stay tight. Get yourself in a good place and stay tight. Um, but I think it's a it's a mixture of of being active and controlling the game with your hands, not allowing rebounds, and uh, and then playing yourself in a position where you can stay tight and 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 take it take the take the angles away from the puck. Uh, but I think I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think that Swedes have gone back to kind of a blocking ideology so it's it's like I said and like you said it's it's fun how how different how many different ways there are to to play the position well and that was my part b uh of of goaltending in Finland because I remember when I first got started sort of trying to learn about the position 15 16 years ago um I'd have guys tell me that as Finnish goaltenders were coming over that they could tell what region they were from based on some of their tendencies. That as much as there was a national program where everyone got together and sort of compared notes and techniques, there was still individualism within the different regions of the country, and you could see those tendencies in the goaltenders that came from there. Has that changed? Do you still see some of that uniqueness? Has it become a little more sort of homogenized and and sort of centralized with one philosophy, or do you still have you still see some of that uniqueness from one part of the country to another that, you know, maybe not most people could see, but the trained eye would be like, oh yeah, that guy came from here or that guy works with this coach. It's a great topic because that is something that I, I pushed myself into. Like I want to, I want to build goalies that look like my goalies until I realized that it, you cannot do it because there's, there, there are so many different, what, like I said, there are you like different ways you want to obviously you want to have the basics good you want to have the your depth with it has to be played in a certain way this is non non-negotiable and like in my philosophy uh but just being with the with the junior national teams in finland you could tell that that guy is from that club that guy is from that club uh so there 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 still is room for that i think uh when Marco Torinius took over 
two years ago. I I have worked with him closely uh, with the national team program. He kind of he kind of put things together, and I think it was something that Finnish goaltending development needed, and like Finland as a hockey country needed that. We need to pull the same rope and, and we need to have these done. We need to have these things in the Finnish goaltending, whereas it was like that like probably 15 years ago. And and ever since, it's kind of been like, these are these guys are really good at doing this and these guys are really good at doing that. And hey, we need to talk about that. We want to be really good in that too. Like, can you guys help us? And I think it's, especially now, like, 15 guys that are working on the pro level in Finland getting together every summer and once uh, once during the season that, hey, we're on the same boat. We're developing Finnish, Finnish hockey and we're representing Finnish hockey that can we help each other and that's something that uh, we need if we want to stay, stay on top and be successful. Is that still something like, I mean, remember those were famous 20 years ago, the idea that goalie coaches from different regions all came and had the meeting and First country to do it, you know, to, to develop a, a national program for goaltenders where everyone sort of shared knowledge and then took that back to their region. Not that they had to do everything a certain way, but th- at least there was that sharing. It sounds like as much as it might be more centralized and more on the same page, that sharing is still a big part of this. Uh, so so that still happens on an annual basis. The goalie coaches get together. And I'm curious too, you mentioned UC Pakela coming back. Was he? Did he still take part in those types of meetings and those types of development sessions even after he went to the NHL? Uh, the, yeah, that's what I mean. Like he he was involved. Like he had his topic. He wasn't like physically present there, but but he was. He had his own like topic there, and and uh, I don't know when before I got the job with the U twenty national team. I don't know. I don't remember if we had meetings the year two years prior. But then at least the last three summers we've had that meeting and then everyone's just so excited about it. And everyone's just asking, like, can we do that during the, like, whatever, what's it called, that uh, party luck tournament, uh, that four, four tournament, Euro challenge, whatever. Yeah, Carly like, Cup, okay. Car- 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 Cup yeah. or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so Liga teams are not playing. Can we get together, go watch a game? do a meeting okay you take a topic of whatever and let's talk about it and let's share our ideas and how your topic how has it been we talked about this talked about it this summer how has it been now that you've done it for six months or whatever uh, i think it's something that for me it's been natural i don't i've i've never thought of myself being a really good goalie coach i that's why i want to learn from others all the time and 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 see what's out there yeah, it's. It, I, I love that. I, lo- I love that concept. I love that idea. I understand. Actually, I think Colorado obviously went and played a couple of games in Finland. I think UC ran at least a, a camp or a seminar or something while he was back there. So it sounds like he's still very much a part of that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he's a good good guy to follow too, right? So especially for us Finns. I gotta ask, like uh, we've, we've we've been talking half an hour on sort of where you're at right now. How'd you get started? Like, where did where does this like? There's a clear passion here for the position. Um, where did it start for you? Obviously, you, you mentioned playing it. Uh, how'd you fall in love with with goaltending? I started, I started as a skater. Probably everyone does that, and then whatever you're eight or ten, you might try the position, and then obviously. Learn to skate first helps, and then, and then started. Obviously, fell in love right away. Fell in love right away, and then, probably coaching wise, it was my last years in junior, where I started having like looking back now, I started having those ideas of of the position and how would I teach myself, and obviously then coaches that I had had ideas of how the position should be played and that I remember having like different kind of ideas and stuff. So that was probably the first thing now looking back that, okay, maybe at that time I started thinking of a position like more analytically, but to be honest, then I went to university to study ice hockey coaching 
I thought that I'm going to be a team coach. I wanted to like coach players because I thought that there's more chances out there coaching players. But the first year I ended up goalie coaching during my university. Second year I ended up coaching goalies in the spare time. Uh, and then eventually ended up in Canada with uh, with Scott Murray. I was going to ask about that. I mean, I see it on the see it on the old hockey DB. Um, you know, before all that time at HPK, there's two years there or a year with the Sudbury Wolves, both video coach and goaltending coach. How did that opportunity present itself, and how, like, like clearly there's a bond and a relationship there. I know Scott speaks very well of you, and I'm a massive fan of Scott Murray as well. So, how tell me how that opportunity came about, and how that relationship was built, and what was it like coming over here? What did you see in the goalies that was different at that time from, from back in Finland? Uh, well, obviously they had built that training facility in Sudbury and they wanted employees. Uh, Scott has a friend, I don't remember his name, friend who went to university, the same university that I was in, in Finland. And he knew that there's, that there's a work placement that we do after two years of intensive studies in the in the campus that there is a work placement so school sends guys to coach somewhere and you do that for for one season or however many hours you get per per month you might do that in six months anyways uh they send us a letter and they they wanted two skills coach like skating coaches stick handling coaches ex league players and uh, I just so badly wanted to come to North America to coach that I sent my resume anyways, even though they didn't apply goalie coaches. And then I guess then they realized that, hey, I, I need to run the administrational side too. But, but by Scotty, he could not be on the ice all the time. Hey, well, why don't we bring a goalie guy and a player guy over? And uh, yeah, that's how I, I ended up to uh, Sudbury. And that probably first week, Scott introduced me to uh, Jeff Bukabu. And it's funny, I playing playing pond hockey when I was younger, and then you plow snow on the sides, and you get the wall, however tall it is, and the guys that would hit guys over that snow wall would be called Jeff Bukabu. <laughs> and, uh, and then he's there in the office, and uh, Scott introduced me to him or him to me and then and he goes like would you be interested in doing video coaching for us for Sudbury Wolves I'm like yeah for sure and uh, the first year was probably the best year uh, of my coaching overall like I got to kids young kids doing privates with them I did some skating treadmill and and then then I traveled with the team I was in their, their home games and I got to see like another side of junior hockey. I really enjoyed it. I, I uh, uh, and then the second year, I ended up staying there for two and a half years. Obviously, Scotty probably approach to the game and like goalie coaching overall is somewhat similar to me. That he he strongly believes in like learning and like studying and and seeing what others do. I'm trying to find the best ways to do it. Uh, and that's how I probably, that's why he wanted me to come over in the first place to like, what's going on in Finland. I want to know what's going on in Finland. What do they do there? And so we kind of, it was quick. We built a really good relationship right from the get go. And, and, uh, yeah. And then after two years, when I decided that I want to be involved in the team environment, I wasn't with the. Sudbury Wolves anymore. Uh, I wanted to have those my guys, you know, like I want to coach those two or three guys and, and see if, where can I take them and, and that's when I uh, decided to come back to Finland. That's when we decided with Scotty that day. Let's stay in touch. Let's work on our resumes and, and we'll work, work together again and it almost happened five years ago and I'm happy it ended up being like this now. Last one, because I've kept you longer than I said I would, which I tend to do. Apologies again. <laughs> um, but no problem. That, that split role, 
Um, you know, I see it on the resume, like goaltending coach and video coach. You talked about how important it was that year. We do see, you know, there's sometimes there's opportunities for both over here. And I've seen some goalie coaches that are like, I don't want to be a video coach. So they won't even apply for those jobs. How have you been able to manage both? And do you see value as much as not everyone, like some guys just want to do goalies. Are there things you can learn on the video side that help you as a goalie coach that you think are instrumental? I, I really liked it. I can I can mark down more stuff than normally video coaches would do, just goalie specific stuff. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's like the higher level you go. Uh, I don't think you can do it anymore. Uh, just too much. Too much. Uh, it, it is too much. I was I was with, for example, the U twenty national team. This September, no, when were their world champs? Anyways, I did video, I did live cut, I did some pre scout. It's just time away from from your guys, from your goalies, and going through stuff with them. So for me, it, I'm I'm really happy that I did it. It I would not be here if I didn't. There's I did that in HBK, I did that in Finland. I last. Probably last two, three years, I was half a goalie coach, half a video coach, and one part of a assistant coach. Uh, I was involved in a lot of stuff because of like the knowledge I gained doing the videos. It's been eye opening how much time you actually need if you want to be really, really good at goalie coaching. And if you if you do video on the side, it's it's demanding. There's no not enough hours. No, oh, that's, that's that's great advice. That's excellent advice. And I said that was the last one, but I do have one more. I'm going right back to where we started. You mentioned the tools on the ice that you have access to here. Yeah, I can't remember all the different ones you mentioned. Are there some you like? Like, are you a guy that does a lot of video with your goalies on the ice when they're doing drills? Like, do you use? You talked about slowing it down and showing them um, beyond just game footage. Is there value in your mind in sort of being able to see? themselves in a practice environment see how much time they have before they go to the ice from a narrow stance for example like are you what are some of the tools you love over here that you're using more of uh well obviously i wanted gopros to to uh be involved in my coaching when i was in finland i couldn't get them i probably would have bought them by myself if i stayed there uh but how do you how do you use them just behind the net yeah i basically every Goalie skate we have, we I've, I've put, that put up uh, GoPro behind, and then I've done because some it depends on the drill. It's it's sometimes better to see it from from different views. So I might have iPad with me on the other side, and then GoPro, and that's when basically video coaching comes into play. Because when you start cutting it, it doesn't take that much time to get it to the goalies. They can watch it right after, basically after the practice end. They drive home and watch it. How, how did I do? And then we can talk about it after, or watch it together. What else? What else? The uh, tripod. It's tough to get guys screening goalies nowadays in the practices. <laughs> uh, so the screen tripod is something that I've used a little bit. Uh, I know uh, the I know the the one with the big boards and stuff. The thick the thick black legs. The hockey ice yes. systems one. Yeah, that's actually made locally yeah. here in Vancouver. I know the coach that it's a shooting coach that invented that. Well, that's a neat that's a neat uh, tool to have, for sure. Yeah, love it. Uh, but uh, yeah, those I think the footage and it probably comes through the video coaching that I've done. That I I, I like doing that, and uh, I like that they see themselves doing stuff. Something that might be really tough for them one day, and then going back on another time when they are really good at it, and you you can tell that hey. There's the difference. Yeah, and they get to see it. Yeah, visual feedback is, I, I think it's it's beneficial for those guys. They have to see themselves. They can feel, like, obviously, it's really important how they feel. I, I'm asking them all the time, how do you feel doing that? How do you feel doing that moment? Because, it's obviously, I'm not there. So I need to know as much as I can how they feel. And then if I can add that layer where they can see themselves doing it and then at that or think how they felt doing it i think it's uh it's the right way to do it 
I love it. Yuha, thank you so much for your time today. I really enjoyed this conversation. I know our audience is going to enjoy it as well. Uh, I can't thank you enough for, for spending the time with us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. One more. Just, just, just one just more. Just one. Just, okay. Just one. Is one more different in Finland than it is here? Because maybe Woody's Finnish. Well, but he doesn't ever finish. That, that's very true. Completing it is his biggest nemesis. But Yuha <laughs> seemed to be fine with it. Oh. So I, that's why I think one more means actually three more. Yeah, it's, it's never enough. Let's, we, we, we tease him, but it's just awesome that he's able to get so much so good out of out of all these guys and that was another another great one if you're a young goaltending coach as so many of our listeners are uh what a great listen to think about how to build your career that's exactly what it is yeah. he's building a career one step at a time and not worried about the famous part of it or reaching the top part of it instantly that instant gratification uh is a huge huge influence on all of us yeah and motivator on all of us but you has got it right yeah. a little old school a little old school if you're patient you work hard good things will happen you know i have a buddy who is now one of the uh best known winemakers in canada if not north america who started out as a volunteer dishwasher in france he wanted to get wow. into the restaurant the food and beverage industry started as a volunteer dishwasher and has worked his way all the way up and it's uh the value of hard work and the value of uh, connecting with people and just offering to how can you help somebody else and not the other way around can make a huge difference in life. Relationships and patience. Patience. We don't value either enough in this wild world that we're going. But the, the patience part, I'm not sure what, what's more difficult. The, the patience, boy, and winemaking, can you imagine that? And, and being one of those Got to happen now, got to happen now. Well, you just wouldn't last very <laughs> No, it's, it's, uh, it's years and years to build a, a great crop. Hey, we should do this more often, just you and I hanging just, out. Well, when, when, when we're down in Vegas in a few weeks, we can do it by the pool without yeah. Woody. Yeah. Great point. We're going to do that. Uh, seriously, Woody, thanks for uh, your great contributions. Uh, over, I hope you're having a great time at the hockey shop. Uh, Source for Sports Langley and that conversation with Yuha was outstanding. Uh, appreciate it, uh, Hutch. Uh, have a great week. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy from Thanksgiving to my you. My side of the border uh, to you. And that the best part is simply I get two meals. So that's yeah. That's you had awesome. one in Canada that's, uh, too. Greatest part. Darn right. <laughs> Darn right. Uh, and thanks to you, uh, the listener. Let us know about broken noses. If you have you ever had one and then played right after, I'd love to know whether it affected your, your game or not. Uh, we'll talk to you next week on In Gold Radio, the podcast. Mm -hmm.